Hey guys, Aaron here from Golf Custom. So I've been wanting to do some experiments with some new blade coatings for a while now. And uh, I've been working on this for a couple of months and I've finally gotten all of my engineering samples back from the various uh, suppliers and we're ready to start doing some testing. There are a number of different coatings. Uh, there are some single layer coatings and some dual layer coatings. And there's also one blade that's gonna be uncoated as, as a baseline and also one blade that is coated with Cerakote, which is my standard coating, to see how it stacks up against the other ones. So the dual layer coatings basically have an underlayer of what's called chromium nitride. And then on top of that, there are a couple of different coatings. Uh, one that I'm really excited about is diamond-like carbon, which is quite literally a diamond-like film of carbon that uh, comes out like a really nice black. It's very, very hard and very slippery. It has a very low coefficient of friction, which means that things don't hang onto it easily. The other one is called tungsten carbide carbon, and this is a much less common coating. It seems to be getting used in Europe on injection molds and stuff more than it gets used in North America. And we've got two coatings that have tungsten carbide carbon, one that's just by itself straight on top of A2, and then the other that is with a chromium nitride underlayer. So it'll be interesting to see how those perform. And then the, there's a third coating with chromium nitride, which is just a layer of chromium nitride. And that's a little bit thicker than the other ones that are used as an underlayer. I am gonna start gluing these blades up and then we can start doing some testing. Alright guys, so I've got these knives all fitted up with handles. Um, they've all been sharpened and then everything's been lightly oiled. We're going to see how they, how they look after the light use testing. For the first part of the light use testing, I wanted to give the coatings a workout by cutting an abrasive medium. I decided on double wall corrugated cardboard as it's a fairly consistent test medium and it's also fairly abrasive. Each of the knives was used to cut 400 linear feet of cardboard. You can see here the kind of edge retention that I expect from my knives. After cutting 400 linear feet of cardboard, this knife is still cleanly cutting phone book paper. For the next part of the light use testing, I wanted to use a medium that was less abrasive but that involved more pressure, so I decided to do some wood carving. I used each knife to carve slivers off pieces of poplar, pine and mahogany. With the light use testing done, I moved on to some heavier use. To really test the abrasion resistance of the various coatings, I used each knife to split pieces of poplar. The action of splitting wood pinches the blade in between the wood as you split it, and applies a lot of pressure. This will damage softer coatings very quickly. Each knife was used to split the poplar 50 times. Once I had split all the poplar I had on hand, I moved on to splitting some larger blocks of mahogany. Each knife was used to split the mahogany 12 times. Now that all the light and heavy use testing is done, let's have a look at how the various coatings fed. First up is Cerakote, and you can see straight away that it's showing a lot of evidence of wear after all that use. Chromium nitride held up perfectly, as did the DLC and the dual layer tungsten carbide carbon coatings. The single layer WCC coating got one scratch on it during testing, but the real surprise was how many scratches the satin finished blade was showing after testing. With all of the abrasion resistance testing done, it's now time to move on to the corrosion resistance testing. Each of the knives was wrapped up in wet towels and then sealed inside a plastic container. 
This is a fairly serious test of corrosion resistance, and even a lot of stainless steels will actually show rust spots after being left like this for a few days. Before I started the corrosion testing, I actually stripped all of these back, uh, stripped the oil off all of them using a scrubbing brush and detergent. But that's not how I would recommend a customer uses their knives, and it's not how I would ship a knife to a customer either. Normally, I would lightly oil all of these coatings in order to bring out the proper color in the coating, um, and also to stop fingerprints from showing up on the coating. So, to remedy that, I've got another set of test blades here, all coated, and I'm basically going to lightly oil all of these and then do a corrosion resistance test with these as well. All of the oiled blades, as well as the unoiled blades, were then wrapped up again and left for a couple of days to complete the corrosion testing. Alright, so these are the 48 hour test blades that were uh, corrosion tested with no oiling. Um, and out of all of these, the DLC and the Cerakote did the best. The DLC, before cleaning it, had visible rust marks, but then after cleaning it, this barely just a trace of where those marks were, like they're, they're pretty much gone, um, which is pretty impressive given that that was not oiled or anything. The Cerakote has one mark and that's it. I always knew the Cerakote was pretty good for corrosion resistance, so that's not a huge surprise. The others all have residual marks. Um, the WCC is pretty good, but it did scratch on the other side during the use testing, so so yeah, this has been really interesting. Uh, I'm going to wait and see another 24 hours and see how the oil blades come out. Um, but the DLC and Cerakote are both doing very well so far. Alright guys, so here we've got the test blades. And they were sitting in this container wrapped in wet towels for six days. And there's been a, a variety of different reactions. The Cerakote performed the best with no rust marks, no nothing at all. The DLC has one tiny mark. Other than that, it's completely untouched, which is actually pretty amazing. I was not expecting that good of a result. The chromium nitride has a couple of little rust spots. Overall, didn't do too bad at all. The WCC did not do well, unfortunately. It's rusted through in a number of spots. The, the dual layer coating with the chromium nitride underlayer did better, but still, nowhere near as well as the DLC. Alright guys, so the testing up until this point has taken about seven or eight days, and it's been seven or eight days totally well spent. Um, the results have been quite enlightening. Uh, the new PVD coatings that I was testing are pretty amazing. Like, you know, they're, they're kind of modern engineering at its, at its best, which is awesome that I have access to that stuff now. Um, but the best of them all has clearly been DLC. And I was not expecting this coating to hold up as well as it did. I was not expecting any of the coatings to hold up as well, to be honest. Uh, this exact blade is the blade that I used for all of the testing, and it's still pretty much unmarked. There's a couple of tiny blemishes on the blade from the corrosion resistance testing, but like it's you know almost perfect. Most people wouldn't even notice those blemishes. So I'm really, really looking forward to offering this as my standard coating on all of my knives going forward. Um, that's going to be awesome. That's a, that's a big leap in what I can offer, and I'm really excited about that. Really appreciate you guys following along with the testing. Um, there's going to be more videos coming soon, of course, and there's also going to be a lot more knives coming with DLC coding.